Hi, welcome to lesson 4.1, Translations. Before we start with the lesson, I want you to pause the video and I want you to uh, cut out pages 91 through 122 in your chapter 4 journal. Go ahead and pause right now and resume when you're ready. Now, in preparation for lesson 4.1, you are going to need a couple of pieces of graph paper. You're going to need your protractor to use as a ruler, and you're going to use um, also some glue sticks. All right, so please get those materials ready. Once you're ready, you can continue with the video. Now, turn to page 92. On page 92, I'm sorry, not 92, 93, apologize. At the bottom of page 93, what you're going to do is you are going to glue one piece of graph paper vertically. You are going to grab an additional piece of graph paper and you're going to fold it and cut it vertically. And one of the pieces is going to go right there. Save the other piece for the next page. That's going to be for problem number one and this one's going to be for problem number two. So as I'm giving out these instructions, make sure you pause the video so you can go ahead and get these uh, papers, and I mean these graph papers ready to go. Now on the next page, page 90, 94, sorry, okay, the other remaining little piece, you are going to glue it way at the top, and that's going to be for problem number three. Make sure you glue it horizontally. Question number four, you're going to grab a piece of graph paper and you're going to glue it vertically. There's a purpose for why some of these are vertical and some of these are horizontal. And for the other piece of graph paper, you're going to glue it at the bottom of the same page horizontally. And that's for problem number five. So once again, three, four, and five. Now the last problem is going to be on page 95 and that's going to be for problem number 6. Once you have your materials ready to go and everything glued in, then continue with the video because we're going to start the exploration right now. Now the exploration starts on page 92. Now, transformations is, is pretty much like the umbrella term for four different types of transformations that we're going to be doing. The first one we're doing today is called a translation. A translation is another word for saying that you're going to move something. Okay. Now, for example, down here you have two triangles. Okay. Let me zoom into it so you can see what I'm talking about. Now, in the first triangle on the left, that is triangle A, B, and C. You can see that this same triangle is being moved in this direction. The name of that new triangle is called A prime, B prime, and C prime. The original image, I mean the original figure that you see here is called the pre-image. Okay, so the pre image it's kind of like the before picture it's the original after you translate it to a different location it is now called the image it's kind of like the after before and after so how do you know which one's which well, if you zoom in very closely to that triangle, you're going to see that you are going to have what we call prime notation. It's just the, the, the same um, vertice name, but with a little line uh, right next to it. Now, looking at these two figures, how does the pre-image translate into where the image is at? One of the ways that you can figure this out is by looking at a pair of corresponding vertices. For example, let's pick C for example. The coordinate of C happens to be 2, negative 1. 
after the translation, C is going to be 6, 0. Okay, so how, how did it move? Now, if I wanted to count, I can do that. That's 1, 2, 3, 4. Okay, so it moved 4 in the right direction and then it moved 1 in the positive direction. Okay, so it moved 4 to the right and 1 up. If I wanted to come up with a rule for how this polygon or how this triangle moved, it would look something like this. Now, this right here is called vector notation. Now, we're going to talk a little bit later about what exactly is a vector. Now, if I wanted to write something that we call arrow notation, an arrow notation is pretty much like a rule. Like, what do you do to the x value in order for the x to become a different number? For example, 2 moved 4 to the right and now becomes 6. Negative 1 moved 1 up and now becomes 0. So what did I do? Well, very simple. Let's look at what happened. X comma Y represents any point that is in this figure. So if I wanted to come up with a general rule, it would look something like this. What did I do to this value of x in order for it to become 6? 2 plus 4 is 6. So therefore, the rule is x plus 4. The negative 1 moved to the 0. It moved 1 up. So this would be y plus 1. We call this arrow notation. And if I wanted to apply this rule to any point in polygon ABC, I can do that. Okay, so the question is, what is the difference between arrow notation and vector notation? Well, they both do the same thing. They both tell you how to move a polygon. It just looks different. This is called vector notation and this is arrow notation. Now, question, what happens if it moves to the left? When this polygon moved to the right, we had an x plus 4. If this polygon moves to the left, this plus becomes a minus. What if the polygon moves down instead? then that number right there will become a minus sign. So we have a generic rule for arrow notation. Okay, sorry. All right, so if I wanted to move a polygon about a certain vector, now remember, a vector is another type of rule that tells you how to move it. So if I wanted to move a polygon about this vector, Keep in mind, this is not a coordinate point. It's a rule. It tells you how to move it. Okay. Then I will be doing this. X plus A, Y plus B. If my A is negative, then my polygon is going to move to the left. If my A is positive, it moves to the right. If my B is negative, it moves down, and if my B is positive, it moves up. Well, what if A and B are zero? Then that means it does not move in either the horizontal or the vertical direction. Let's apply this again to, to the next problem. So let's turn to page 93. Okay, so on page 93, you have the following polygon. Okay, this polygon happens to be a right triangle. Okay, I'm trying to work with the lighting here. Maybe that's a little too dark. Okay, I'll stick to that. 
Okay, so you have A, B, and C. Now it says use the rule you wrote in part A to translate triangle ABC four units to the left and three units down. So if I wanted to, I can come up with a rule showing that. Okay, so let's come up with a rule. The rule looks like this. Four units to the left, so that would be x minus 4, and 3 units down, y minus 3. Now you can go ahead and, and apply that rule to every single coordinate. You can do that. Or you could simply just count. Okay. So let's start with A. So how do you do this? Very simple. Put your, your pencil on A. You're going to move 4 to the left and 3 down. Count with me. 1, 2, 3, 4, down 1, 2, 3. You're going to put your point right there, and you're going to call that point A prime. Repeat the process for B. Here is B. 1, 2, 3, 4, down 1, 2, 3. That point right there is going to be called B prime. Do the same thing for C. 1, 2, 3, 4, down 1, 2, 3. And that's going to be C prime. Once you have translated all of the points, all you have to do is simply connect the points again. That way you'll be able to tell the difference between the pre-image ABC and the image A prime, B prime, and C prime. Okay. So, what we just did again is called a translation. Now, the question is, do the side lengths change? From my visual observation here, all the sides stayed the same size, okay? So we can say that translation does not affect the length or, or does not change the lengths of the polygons. So translations or translations do not make a figure bigger or smaller. They practically stay the same. Now, what about the angles? Well, let's let's take a look at the angles. Now, in part of the second exploration, they're asking you, is ABC a right triangle? Well, one of the ways we can tell if it's a right triangle is to see if two lines are perpendicular. So, the most common angle here that uh, the most likely angle that is going to be a right angle is going to be this one right here. So I would have to figure out the slope of line AB and the slope of line AC and then determine if they're opposite reciprocals. So looking at AB from here to here you can tell that the rise is 2 the run is 4. So the slope is going to be 2 over 4. And for AC, you have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and the run is 3. So 6 over 3, and that's a negative. If you were to reduce these, you would get 1 half, and you would get negative 2. Now what I'm going to do with these results here is I'm going to multiply them. 1 half multiplied by negative 2. And that result is a negative 1. So what does that imply? It implies that AB is perpendicular to BC. And therefore, A, triangle ABC, is a right triangle. Now my question for part B is, is A prime, B prime, and C prime a right triangle? Well, as you can see, 
the triangle pretty much just moved, but the angles did not change. The sizes did not change of the side lengths. So why would the angles change? Okay, so we can also say that translations does not change the angles of a polygon. Okay, translations do not change the angles of a polygon. All right, before we start with the examples, let's go over to page 95. A little bit of vocabulary. All right, the first thing we want to discuss is the term vectors. What is a vector? The diagram here shows a vector. Notice that there is no x and y axis on this. That is because a vector could be literally anywhere in the x, y plane. Okay, it doesn't have to be, it's not an, it's not an equation of a line, it's nothing like that. Okay, now a vector has what we call an initial point or a starting point and a terminal point, that means it stops. The vector is named PQ, which is red vector PQ. The horizontal component in this vector happens to be five, and the vertical component happens to be three. Okay, so the component form of a vector combines both the horizontal and vertical components. So the component form of this vector is five, three. So 5, 3 is what we call component form, or kind of like vector notation. So this is, this is right here, this is like the rule. It tells you how to move it. Okay, so keep that in mind. You can also get a rule using arrow notation. Now, I wouldn't get very concerned about the technicality of all this. Just keep in mind that a translation is a movement of a figure in a certain direction, whether you go to the right or to the left, up or down. So let's go ahead and begin our examples. Hopefully you guys have already um, glued your graph paper and are ready to go. Okay, so let's go to page 93. That's where our first example is going to go. All right, here's example number one. And make sure you're pausing the video so you can um, draw the examples and then continue the video whenever you're ready to go. So this is example one. In the diagram, name the vector and write its component form. So let's start naming the vector. If you look at this vector, the vector has an initial, an initial point and a terminal point. The initial point happens to be J, the terminal points happens to be K. So we call this vector J, K, like this, okay? It's kind of like a ray, you would say. Now, the component form of this vector is dependent on what direction it's going from the starting point to the end point. So the first component here is the horizontal component. How does it move? Does it move to the left or does it move to the right? So from here you can tell it moves one, two, three. It moves three units to the right. So therefore this will be a positive three. Had this moved to the left then this would be a negative three. Now from this point, it's gonna move up one, two, three, four. So the horse, the vertical component is gonna be positive four because it's going up. If it was going down, then it would be a negative four. Just keep in mind that in this number, if the number is a positive, that means it's gonna go to the right. If the number is a negative, that means it goes to the left. 
for this number right here, if the number is a positive, it's going to move up. And if the number is a negative, it's going to move down. If either one of these is zero, that means that it's not going to move. Okay. All right. So that is example number one. Let's look at example number two. <clears throat> Okay, let me zoom out a little bit. Okay, for example two, it says the vertices of ABC are 0, 3, 2, 4, and 1, 0. Translate ABC using the vector 5, negative 1. So the very first thing we're going to do is we are going to plot these three points. The first one is 0, 3. So here's 0, I'm not moving left or right, and up 1, 2, 3. This point right there is going to be A. B is 2, 4. 1, 2, 1, 2, 3, 4. That's B. And then C is 1, 0. So that's going to be C. Now this right here is going to be a triangle because obviously you have three points. Now this triangle is what we call the pre-image. So these right here, these are the coordinates of the pre-image. Now you can go ahead and count or you can simply apply the rule um, to every coordinate and then graph it. But sometimes counting is a lot easier. So let's start with A. The rule says that I'm going to be moving 5 to the right and 1 down. Why 1 down? Because that's a negative. Why to the right? Because that's a positive. So let's start with A. I'm going to count 5 to the right and 1 down. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 1 down. That new point is going to be called A prime. And I repeat the process for B. Count 5 to the right and 1 down. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and then 1 down. That's B prime. And then repeat the process for C. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 1 down. Once you do that, connect your points. Hence, now you have your pre-image and your image. Notice that the triangle is exactly the same size. The angles did not change. Okay, So two polygons that have the same size and same angles are considered to be congruent. So just so you know, here, triangle ABC is congruent to triangle A prime, B prime, C prime. They have the same length, same angles. Okay, so if I were to look at the, the new coordinates, those will be the coordinates of my image. Remember, pre image is your original, image is your final result. All right, let's take a look at example three. In example three, it says write a rule for the translation. A, B, C to A prime, B prime, and C prime. Now I'm going to write my rule in two ways. I'm going to write it in vector component notation, or vector form, or component form, whatever you want to call it. And I'm going to write it in terms of arrow notation. Now some of them you can very easily tell, you know, how, how it's going to move. All right. So let's look at A prime. Actually, no, let's look at the pre-image. Which one's the pre-image? The one that does not have the little commas on it. So it would be this one. You only have to do it for one of them. You don't have to do it for all three. You can do it for all three to verify. What do I have to do in order to get from A to A prime? Well, you can count. Okay, I have to go to the left and up. How much? One, two, three, four. Four to the left. That means that this here is going to be four to the left. 
So once again, one, two, three, four, and then one up. That means that's gonna be a positive one. Now, if I were to do the same thing, just to verify for C, one, two, three, four, and up one. Do it for B, one, two, three, four, and up one. It works for all of these. So this is the rule in vector notation. Now to convert this right here into arrow notation, what I would have to do is this. For every x value, I'm going to subtract 4, and for every y value, I'm going to add 1. And you can try this with any of the coordinates if you'd like. I'll show you one. Let's look at a. Okay, the coordinate of a happens to be 4, 3. If I apply the rule that I just came up with, look at what's going to happen, okay? x minus 4, okay? So the value of x is 4. So that would be 4 minus 4. The value of y is 3, so 3 plus 1. So when I simplify this, it's going to look like this. 4 minus 4 is 0, and 3 plus 1 is 4. Doesn't that match up with our a prime? It sure does. So that means that this rule does work. So that's example number two. Let's look at example number three. Okay, for example number three, it says graph the quadrilateral ABCD with the following vertices. Let me try to focus it a little bit. Okay, that's a little better. All right, so we have four coordinates. That means we're gonna get a quadrilateral. So let's plot them. A is negative one, two. Okay, so negative one, positive two. That's A. B is negative one, five. So negative one, five. One, two, three, four, five. So that part is B. C is 4, 6. 1, 2, 3, 4. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. That's C. And D is 4, 2. And that is going to be D. Okay? All right. So now what I'm going to do is I'm simply going to connect these. It's not a rectangle, it's actually a trapezoid. All right, so now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna translate it using this rule. Now let me interpret this rule. This rule says x plus three. That means that I'm gonna move this three units to the right. Okay, three units to the right. And because this is a negative one, I'm going to move this one unit down. Why? Because that's a minus sign. And that's a negative. So let me just do that with every single coordinate. Okay. So let's start with A. Three to the right and one down. One, two, three, one down. That's A prime. Do it with B. One, two, three three and one down. That's B prime. Do it with C. One, two, three, down one. That's C prime. And for D, one, two, three, and one down, and that is D prime. Do not forget your primes. And then just simply connect them. Sometimes what helps is using different colored highlighters so you can kind of know the difference. So what did we just do? We literally just moved this polygon ABCD. We moved it three units to the right and one unit down. Hence now we have our image. Remember, pre-image, image. And that is example number four. 
Let's look at example number five. Make sure you're pausing the video if I'm going a little too fast and replay if you need it. Okay, example five. It says graph RS with the following endpoints and its image after the composition. That's a new word. What is a composition? A composition is when you're doing more than one transformation. In this example, you are doing two translations. So what I want to see is I want to see not only the pre-image, I want to see the first translation, and then I want to see the second translation, but not based on the original diagram. It's going to be based on the pre-image. Okay, so I'll explain what that means in just a bit. So first, let's plot R s r happens to be negative 8 5 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 and then up 5 1 2 3 4 5 that is going to be r s is going to be negative 8 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 oops sorry 6 went a little too too far and then up 8 one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay, so then that's going to be S. So if you connect this, this is going to be the pre image. So let's apply the first translation because you have to apply them in that order that they tell you. So the, the rule says to add 5 to the x and subtract 2 to the y. What's this going to do? Well, what this is going to do, it's going to move the, the diagram to the right 5 units, and then it's going to move it down 2 units. How do I know it's down? Because of the minus sign. So let's do that first. Let's start with r. 5 to the right and 2 down. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, down 1, 2. I'm going to call this R prime. Do it with S. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and then down 2. 1, 2. That's S prime. Connect them. Hence now you have performed the first translation. Now what we need to do is we need to apply the second translation not to the pre-image, not to the original one. We're going to apply to this one right here. That's the biggest mistake people do. They apply it to this one. Don't do it. Apply it to the one you just moved. So the one that we're going to do, it's going to, it says x minus 4. That means that we are going to move to the left 4 units and then down 2 units. So to the left 4 one, two, three, four, and then down two. One, two. We're going to call that, now we already called this one R prime, so we're going to call this one R double prime. Yes, we can do that. S, one, two, three, four, and then down two. We're going to call this S double prime. Hence, now we have applied the second translation okay so the first translation moved this one to here and the second one moved it to here okay so if, if by now we still don't understand what is a translation a translation is literally a movement it does not change the figure it does not change the size it does not change the angles let's look at the last example example six Okay, you're deciding, designing a favicon. If you don't know what a favicon is, if you look at, at a tab in a browser, it has a little image. So that image is called a favicon, okay, for a golf website. In an image editing program, you move the red rectangle two units to the left and three units down. Then you move the red rectangle one unit to the right and one unit up. Rewrite the composition as a single translation. Okay, so the first, the first translation that we're going to do, it says two units to the left and three units down. So that's going to translate to x minus 2 and y minus 3. 
The second translation, it says it's going to move one unit to the right, so that it's going to be x plus 1 and one unit up, y plus 1. So it says write the composition as a single translation. Well, let's, let's, let's sound logical here. If I wanted to write this as one translation, okay, let's, let's put our brain together here and, and figure out how is this going to look like. Well, think about it like this. If you move two to the left and then one to the right, in reality, you only move one to the left. If you move three to the left and one to the right, in reality, you just move two to the left. In other words, you could do negative two plus one, that's negative one, and negative three plus one, that's negative two. So this right here is the equation in error notation for the single translation that makes up both of these two. All right, so this comes to the conclusion of our lesson. Please make sure you are completing the extra practice, and we will see you later. Have a great day.